Today's patient was a 41-year-old male. Uh, his main concern was loss at the frontal area, and he also had red hair. So the thing that's interesting about red-haired individuals is the gene for red hair also codes 20% more pain receptors. So when you get a red hair in your chair, you want to make sure that you're really taking care of their pain needs. So you usually end up using about 20% more pain medication. And you have to be really sensitive to their comfort level throughout the whole entire procedure. In his case, he also had a lot of hair. So redheads do tend to have a little bit more hair than say somebody with black hair. But in his case, he had slightly above average and he really wanted to fill in that frontal zone. He ended up getting about 3,200 grafts. We ended up filling in the whole kind of rind of this frontal area and also all the way into the back of his hairline. So he was really pleased with our final number, but even if we had only gotten 2,000 grafts, we would have been able to fill in that whole frontal area for him and it really made a difference framing his face. Now when patients talk about numbers, Sometimes they think, oh, more is just definitely better, but that's not necessarily the case. For most patients, about 2,500 grafts is gonna cover roughly half of their head. That can be the front half, or that can be the back half. I usually make the argument that framing your face is gonna give you the most aesthetic benefit. If you fill in the crown, but people can't you know, see that in pictures and your rear view mirror when you see yourself coming out of the shower, doesn't seem to make as much of an aesthetic impact. And it often is the case that for patients I filled in their crown, but not their frontal area, they always come back and want me to finish the job. But sometimes I'll fill in the frontal area and they come back and they say, the crown doesn't bother them anymore. They don't see it. So about half the time, you can fix both a crown and a frontal area by just filling in the frontal area. So when doctors give huge numbers to patients, oh, we're gonna fill in 4,000 grafts, we're gonna fill in 5,000 grafts, often that's not really needed, as it wasn't in this case. He got a great surgery, 3,200 grafts is really fantastic, and he filled in everything he possibly needed without taking too much hair out of his donor area. Donor area management is something that's a really unsexy topic on hair loss forums, but it's very important for the lifetime of the patient to make sure that you're taking what you need when you need it, and preserving that back area, making it look as good as you possibly can so that you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. A lot of times when you're dealing with an FUE only surgery and the patients are cutting the hair short, you're leaving the area a little bit moth eaten if you take too much hair. Now sometimes that can be corrected with skillfully applied scalp micropigmentation, but sometimes not. Sometimes if you take too much at once, you end up really disfiguring that patient for life, and who cares what the front of their hair looks like if the back looks like a shark has taken a bite out of it. So you really want to manage somebody's donor area as well as you possibly can. And if somebody's a really well-trained hair surgeon, they're totally going to know what they're doing when it comes to that. This is why linear surgery still has a place, as it did in our patient today. He was never going to be able to or want to shave his head. He could still shave his head. His scar is going to heal very, very nicely. And he could even get scalp micropigmentation, even with red hair. But he really needed the one and done as much as he possibly could get. And his hair was perfectly suited to a linear surgery. Now, when you look at the back of his head, even today, on the day of surgery, as he's leaving the office, you would never even see anything. He could go out to dinner right here in downtown Walnut Creek, California, and nobody would notice. So it's really individual to the patient, which surgery they decide to do. Sometimes we do some long-term planning where we're gonna be doing a linear surgery first and an FUE later, or an FUE now and a linear later if they need it. All of these things kind of come into play when you're dealing with an individual patient's needs.